pressure, and ideal gas. I'm going to have this right here because we're going to talk about a bed of nails. A bed of nails? You mean a back scratcher? I guess because he's supposed to be really tough. Okay, let's talk about pressure here. And we've got an equation from our data booklet, which is nice. It goes like this. P equals F over A. Okay, so what kind of units do we have? Pressure is measured in pascals, mostly. Force is measured in newtons. Area is measured in meters squared. But that means, hey, if you've got pressure is force over area, can't it also have units of, let's see now, it could also have units of, um, well, units of force, which is newtons, over area, which is meters squared. So we can say that pressure is also in newtons, meters, uh, newtons per meter squared, sorry. So that means it could also be this. So let's consider a bed of nails. So imagine then if you're sitting, you know, some mass right here that's going to be sitting on just one nail. Compare that to that same mass sitting on lots of nails. So let's say this is like your body. Let's say you're like laying down on a bed of nails. All right, well, let's look at what happens. If you have a small area, what does that do to the pressure? Well, it's going to be the same force. Let's assume it's like you laying down on this thing in both cases. If you're laying down, but there's a very small area, you know, there's just a single nail, well, then you divide by a very small number, and the number divided by a smaller number, it turns out, is a larger pressure. So that means that if the area is small, that means the pressure then will be large. This is bad news for you because this, if this is your body, and this is a nail, this nail can go through you and hurt you. Ouch. By contrast, what happens here now? Same mass, okay, so in other words, same force, but now we have a larger area to distribute this. So if we divide by a larger number, what happens? That means the pressure then will go down. And that's better for you. And in fact, in many cases, that's why it is that you can actually lay down on a bed of nails. I've done it before. I have no, you know, uh, yoga powers or anything. I'm not one with the universe necessarily, not for this reason at least. Uh, but I think it's really interesting to say that, no, anyone can just lay down on it. I've done it before. I've actually built one of these here for kids and actually brought it to class and had the kids sit on this seat of nails instead of a bed of nails. It works fine. As long as there's enough nails, you distribute the weight, that's perfectly fine. The pressure won't be so large, and I won't poke you and go ouch. So let's consider what we call the kinetic model. And this is a theoretical model, and you know we're going to approximate a gas to make it simpler or easier. We're going to call this an ideal gas. So imagine then in this ideal gas here, there's these different particles that are moving around here, and they're all going in random directions. They're all just moving along. Some of them are running into each other. There we go. Just, I'm just drawing random directions here. Well, the assumptions of this right here, kinetic model, this is really, really important. So I'll say no this. At least know a few of them. First of all, we're going to assume, because keep in mind, we're going to try to make our lives easier. So yes, in chemistry, we know that there's lots of forces in between the molecules. Chemists spend all their time on this, but we're just going to assume, you know what, ideal gas, we're going to assume there's no forces in between them. We're also going to assume they're all the same size and mass. We're going to assume that they're perfectly elastic collisions, which means they don't stick, they bounce perfectly, for example, and we're going to assume it works for all particles. Okay, so let's consider then what happens with the pressure with these collisions at the surface. So I'll just draw a few more particles again and draw them in random directions. So maybe up, and maybe down, maybe this way, maybe that way. So what happens is this. When a particle, uh, so when they actually hit the walls, what happens? Well, they're going to change direction. That means they're going to change momentum. Now, why is that? Remember, you have this equation, J equals F delta T. I don't know if you remember that one right there. This is from your formula booklet, or data booklet, sorry. But uh, keep in mind, it's also equal to delta P. So that means a change in momentum. So that means if you change in momentum right here, you're also you know, having a resultant force. So that's the key part here, the resultant force. And remember, since, for example, we had this equation, uh, pressure equals force over area, well, that means if there is some kind of um, force, then there must be a pressure. So that means there's a resultant pressure on the walls. And that's what we can then define from our data booklet. So it goes like this. It goes P equals one-third times rho times V squared. Now, it's important that we define everything here. So first of all, what's this P? That's pressure that's measured in pascals. Density of a gas, what's that? Well, that's going to be measured in, well, it's mass over volume. So kilograms, for example, per meter cubed. Now, this V is not capital V. This is really important, okay? This right here is a lowercase v, okay? So this is lowercase. In other words, it's not equal to volume. 
That's not what we mean here. That can get confusing. Okay, it's not equal to volume. V is going to be the average translational speed of the molecules. And remember what that's going to be measured in? That's going to be in meters per second. So this is like a velocity. Okay, and I think what's really important is that we understand this exam tip right here, that higher temperature means more speed. So what do we mean by this? Well, let's just consider this. If we have a temperature, for example, that goes up. Well, remember that temperature is the average kinetic energy of these molecules. So that means if the temperature goes up, that means the speed must go up. And because of that, if speed goes up, that means then pressure must go up. So that means more temperature means more pressure. That's really important. Okay, so temperature going up leads to a raise or a, you know, a larger value of pressure. So let's actually look at this with an animation from PHET. So let's do the gas properties one that they have. So I've already uh, put in um, some molecules here, some heavy particles. So they're just bouncing around here. You can see the temperature is 300 Kelvin, and we've got a certain pressure right here. So let's look, first of all, I just want you to know, notice that it's about the average kinetic energy of these molecules. Do you notice it's the average? So that means that, do you notice some of them are going faster than others, but the average is going to tell us the temperature. See that? So I think it's really, it's a nice view that you can see some are going slow, some are going faster, but the average will be such that it's 300 Kelvin. Okay, now what's going to happen? As I raise the temperature, what do we expect to happen again? If I raise the temperature, that means I should make these particles move faster. And by, con uh, by that equation, if they move faster, that means they should also have more pressure. So I'm going to heat it up. We're going to watch for two things happening. One is going to be we're going to see if these guys really do move faster. If they move faster, that means the temperature should go up. And crucially, we should see the pressure also increase. So let's take a look at it. Let's see what happens here. I'm going to increase temperature. Let's see what happens here. Notice that uh, they do look like they're moving faster. The temperature went way up. And notice the pressure also went up. It went all the way up like this. So watch, I can do the opposite, right? If I, if for example, lower the temperature, notice temperature goes down, sure, but the pressure also goes down. So you notice the pressure is tied to the um, temperature. I think that's actually pretty important to know. So raising the temperature raises the speed, which uh, remember the average kinetic energy at least, and that means it'll raise the pressure. So there we go. I thought that was a nice way to you know viscerally show you at least what happens with the temperature and the pressure. I put this near an extrovert says it's a pleasure to meet you, an introvert says it's pressure to meet you. Aww. Now, what are the conditions uh, when we can actually approximate? So take a real gas and approximate it as an ideal gas. These are the main two you need to know at low pressure because there's going to be less intermolecular forces. You know, if there's not much pressure, these things aren't going to be, you know, uh, interacting with each other. Same thing with high temperature. They're moving really fast. So I think those are two, at least the, the key ones. Your low pressure, high temperature. There's other ones, but I think these are the main you need to know.